Pokemon inspired by Japanese mythology, folklore, and real things. Konnichiwa, minasan! Rina here, and welcome to another episode of Onipon! February 27th is Pokemon Day, the day we celebrate and show our appreciation for all the adorable and fierce creatures we call Pokemon. I want to catch them all! Someday. Sadly, those adorable little critters aren't real. But the people who make Pokemon take design inspirations from all sorts of places in the real world. From animals to fish to... Uh, appliances? But sometimes they take inspiration from mythology and lore. And that's what we're here to do today. To take a look at some Pokemon that were inspired by all of those things. Many are even from the newest entry, Pokemon Legends Arceus. I want to see where the developers get their ideas. So let's learn more about the myths and stories themselves. Let's go! Our first Pokemon is Chime Echo. This little guy is known as the Wind Chime Pokemon and for good reason. Its design is heavily inspired by Furin, which are glass wind chimes that you'll find hung around Shinto shrines. They're said to predict disaster and ward off evil spirits. This is referenced in its Pokédex entry, stating its cries echo inside its hollow body to emerge as beautiful notes for startling and repelling foes. Chime Echo's baby form, Chingling, is also inspired by Shinto shrines. They're based on Suzu bells, which are found inside of the Furin. You can especially tell from the red and white tassels attached to Chingling's back. It's so cute! But many Pokémon are based on folklore and various yokai. The first that comes to mind for me is Mawile, the deception Pokémon. It's generally believed that it takes inspiration from the Futakuchi Omna. They're a type of yokai of a beautiful woman with a second mouth on the back of her head. They use their pretty face to lure people in, and then chomp on them with their back mouth. Very deceptive. Sounds like a Pokemon I've heard of recently, eh? Eh? There is another Pokemon that's believed to be based on a female yokai. It's Frostlass. This beautiful female-only evolution of Snorunt is often attributed to the Yukiona. The Yukiona is a yokai that can be found in cold, freezing blizzards. The tales of the Yuki Onna range from demanding you to hug a child, lest you be buried in the snow, to letting you live, should you let her warm up by the fire. Many Pokédex entries state that Frostlass was originally a woman who got lost in a snowstorm. Spooky! Frostlass being a ghost slash ice type perfectly fits! And you can even see the sort of kimono she wears. Another one of my favorites is Vulpix and its evolution, Nine Tails. This is definitely one of the more well-known myths. The story of the nine-tailed fox. Magical special creatures boasting nine tails capable of predicting disaster. The story of the nine-tailed fox is actually Chinese in origin, but over the years, it spread to other cultures like Japan and Korea. Its Pokédex entries regularly reference that Ninetales can live for 1,000 years, with each of its tails containing a unique, mystical power. And in many games, Ninetales is seen as a wise sage, offering advice and guidance. There's lots of other Pokémon inspired by Yokai, like Sea Dot, Nuzleaf, and especially its final evolution, Shift Tree. Shift tree is a type of yokai called a tengu. Tengu have long straight noses, oftentimes have white hair, and wear geta, a type of sandal. And shift tree hits three for three. They're famous for protecting forests and playing cruel tricks on humans. Given that shift tree is a dark slash grass type, it definitely sounds like they 
hit the nail on the head? Or, um, acorn, in the case of C-Dot and its evolutions. Oh, 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 and speaking of dark types, up next is Sneasel, the Sharp Claw Pokemon. It's generally thought that Sneasel is based on the Kamaitachi. They're an almost cat-like slash weasel-like monster that cause strange unseen cuts on someone's skin. They lurk in cold weather and attack with scythe-like claws. Sneasel definitely seems like it takes a few points of reference, being a dark slash ice type that sneaks around at night, cutting with its massive claws. It's not hard to see the resemblance. Did you know, in the newest Pokemon game, Legends Arceus, it takes place in the Hisui region, which is based on the island of Hokkaido. There are a bunch of new Pokemon there, and many of them are based on all sorts of myths and legends. Like Weirdeer, the Lord of the Forest. It seems based on the Yezo Sika Deer, or literally Ezo Deer. Ezo was what the land of Hokkaido was once called long ago. The indigenous people of Hokkaido, the Ainu, heavily treasured this animal, which explains why Weirdeer is so beloved by the people in the game. Another brand new Pokemon new to this game is Basculegion. This ghost slash water type is a conglomeration of many different inspirations. The Basculin found in Hisui seem to be based on the Itoyo or string fish. These are a rare, critically endangered species of fish. Distant cousins of the salmon, they live in Hokkaido's waters. Its Pokédex entries mentioned that it contains the souls of its dead brethren that didn't survive the trip back upstream. It's so sad. The last new Pokémon we'll be showing today is one of my favorites. In Hisui, the popular Pokémon Growlithe takes on a new form to survive the harsh environment. On top of being the cutest widow thing I've ever seen, it takes inspiration from the Shisa. They're stone lion dogs, which you regularly see acting as guard dogs. The Hisuian form is a fire slash rock type, fitting the Shisa. Shisa are always seen in pairs, and this is specifically referenced in the Pokédex entry. It states that they patrol their territory in pairs. When it evolves into Arcanine, it looks like a Koma Inu. But Rena, the Koma Inu looks like a Shisa. Isn't it the same thing? Not really. Even though the Koma Inu and Shisa kind of look the same and are both creatures that offer protection, they're used in completely different areas. The Koma Inu are commonly found protecting anything from Shinto shrines to the homes of nobility. While the Shisa is of Yukyuan origins and guard more everyday places. You can really tell in the way its tufts of fur look almost like clouds. I'd love to have a pair of Growlithe or Arcanine protect me. I'd feel super safe. And that's a wrap! There are so many other Pokémon that are based on all sorts of different aspects of Japanese culture. And we'd love, love, love to talk about them, given the chance. So, let us know in the comments down below if you really like this video and want to see more. Also, let us know which of the Pokémon we talked about today are your favorites. I love hearing your thoughts and opinions. If you want to see more amazing content about Japan, please consider subscribing to this channel. We have all sorts of cool things and fun plans to show you all, including giveaways. wouldn't want to miss that. Plus, it helps us grow and create more amazing content for you all. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Onipon! Matane!